The place where we get to know and respect the living beings we share our planet with. We are happy to see you because today we are going to meet creatures that many people have strong feelings about. Oh dear, I don't really like the sound of that. It's nothing to worry about. We are talking about animals that help us understand the world better and all we need to do is get to know them better. Okay, okay. What are we talking about? <laughs> Reptiles! You mean snakes? Yeah, in fact, not just snakes. Crocodiles, chameleons, tortoises too, and a tiny bit of dinosaurs as well. I'm scared of snakes. They slither in the slide and they hiss and they bite. Yeah, they do all those things and more. They balance the food system by eating rats and mice that damage our crops and bring diseases that are dangerous to us. Who knows? You might even like them once you hear how mm. they are. I'm not so sure about that. Well, let me at least try. I know two people, Lorraine and Alexis, and they've gone to meet someone who loves snakes. I'm Olivia. Many people call me Snake Girl. So I'm a wildlife animal handler. I'm also a tour guide and a conservationist. The first animal that I held was a snake, Whoa. a Gabon viper. Wow. I was about five years old and I did not know that they were really that dangerous. If I knew then, I think maybe I would not even be working with wildlife at the moment. I found this Gabon viper lying under the log. Then I picked it up. It was hissing, making that funny sound like <sighs> So it warned me, but for me, I like that sound. You know how kids are stubborn. Yeah. So I picked it up and I carried it. So I played with it. Did the Gabon Viper actually bite you when you held it? It did not bite me when I held it. And uh, when I grew up, I read about them and I realized that they're so placid and they are so tolerant. Most wildlife become so aggressive when they have been injured by human beings they become so dangerous. But those animals which have never been disturbed by human beings, they're always really okay. We need to protect wildlife and not be aggressive to them. We need to love them. If you cannot take care of it, don't harm it. Just keep your distance. I continued looking for those animals and every time in my free time, I could go in the bush. I used to escape and just go in the wild and then come back in the evening. But that has really helped me to explore and also be the person I am today. Here we have the we have the Honeli chameleon or Triceras Honeli. So these are all female ones because the female ones are always green. This one has changed its color from green to black. It changes its color to black either when it's stressed or when it wants to eat something. We are going to put her back so that she can feel happy. Why are they changing color? They can change color to blend in the environment, to, to hide from the predators. How do they end up changing the color? Because they have the pigment just at the top of the skin layer and that helps them to change the color very, very fast because it connects to their brain and they're able just to quickly relate to what is happening in the, in the environment and they change immediately. But they will quickly change when they're stressed, when they're sick, when they're threatened or when they're camouflaging from the predator. It looks so cool. And she's coming. And it's like she's frozen now. She's not moving because she wants to look like the leaves. 
Do chameleons have very good eyesight? Yes, they have very good eyesight. Because they can look very anywhere, good eyesight. they can look behind. And the, the, uh, their uh, eyes can, can roll up to 360 degrees. So the chameleon wow. can be here facing in front, and it can be able to position its high, the eyes behind yeah, like this, so it can behind. see something which is behind it. Why does this chameleon have thorns? They're not actually thorns, they're horns. So male Johnson chameleons, they have horns like that. They have mm -hmm. three horns, as you can see. Yeah. And then the female ones don't have any horns. These horns, they can use it to fight. Mm -hmm. When they see the, the another, when this one sees another male, it can use his horns to fight. You see that? I mean, the chameleons can also bite. Yeah, they can bite and they can really fight with each other. If the, if the males start to fight, they can really fight. Wow. Do they have teeth? Yes, they have teeth, sharp, a bit sharp. Would you open your mouth a bit and we see your teeth? <laughs> They're very tiny. I'd like you to see. Oh, oh, you see wow. that? You see? Those tiny They're you see? small. Wow, I can see them. Wasn't that amazing? Animals that can change color and roll their eyes right around. <gasps> okay. Chameleons are cool. They can camouflage themselves and they look like mini dinosaurs. But I'm still not very comfortable with snakes. Olivia isn't scared of them though. She learns about them and now she's showing us how valuable they are. And you know what? That's not all she knows. She knows about tortoises as well. But tortoises aren't reptiles. Are they? <laughs> they are. They have scales and their blood is cool and they hatch from eggs like other reptiles. So these ones are the, the babies for the leopard tortoise. They're hatching. They have started coming out yesterday. Yes. It's trying to come out of the shell. Are we allowed to help them come out of the shell? Or they help themselves? They can help themselves. They will come when they're ready. The, sh the thing feels so moist and... Yeah. They're so delicate. The they reason they can walk from the moment they come out of their shell. Yeah, they can yeah. be able to walk immediately. How many years can they live? They can even live for over 70 years. Wow. Let's go! Let's go! We are learning every day. It's so amazing to work with the wildlife. For me, it's like a dream. It's my dream, and I'm so glad that I'm living my dream. Even someone like me, I can do it? Yes, I think you can do it. There's nothing in this world that you cannot do. You just need to be passionate about it. You need to be hardworking. Let's take a moment to slow down and focus. Taking some time to pause is good for us, to help us stay calm. Tortoises and turtles have shells that protect them from their surroundings. They feel safe and cozy once hidden inside it. Imagine that you have a shell that keeps you safe, that you can hide inside when you feel worried. Your shell could be a physical place that makes you feel calm, or it could be a person that looks after you. Sit comfortably and take a moment to think about your shell. What keeps you safe? It could be your family and friends, your neighbors, or your school. When you are feeling worried or sad, it can help to think about your shell and know that you are safe. And we are back, refreshed and ready to go. Remember I told you that snakes are important because they eat rats and mice that bring diseases and destroy our food crops? So they eat meat. Don't worry. They don't want to eat or harm us. They eat meat, which means they are carnivorous. Rats and mice are omnivorous, like us. Ugh. I don't know what that means. I don't like the fact that we do the same. It means that they eat different things, not just meat. We eat vegetables and meat as well. But animals that eat only plants are called herbivores. Can I tell you something really interesting about plants? Do they eat snacks? <laughs> no, they don't. They can't make their own food. Mm -hmm. And all they need to do it is the light of the sun. 
Isn't that a fantastic fact? And there's so much to know about reptiles. We are at the reptile village. Where well, there are over 20 species of reptiles. Mr. Waswa, the happy, 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 happy toilet. toiletist. <laughs> He's mm, going to show us around. In Africa, we have uh, several species of cobras, and they live in forests, they live uh, in grasslands. They are poisonous. They carry some venom in them, some neurotoxic venom. What does venom mean? Their venom, they use it to catch what they're going to eat, to catch mice, wow. to catch birds, yes. to catch frogs. So the glands that manufacture the venom are right on top of the head, right here. Do what you want is to have it do exactly that, okay? Okay? And uh, so as you can see, we have some uh, venom right inside our container, okay? You see that creamy liquid substance? That is the venom from our cobra. Scientists, they milk the venom from the snakes and they manufacture what we call antivenom. So what? Anna, yes. They actually use the venom that they, they use to kill us. Exactly. To help us. Yes. So they use the venom wow. from the snake to create antivenoms that we treat people who get bitten by snakes. Have you, do you see the hood? Yeah. Okay. It's putting on that display. So it has special kind of muscles that flatten out to create that kind of posture. And it's to tell you, please don't mess with me. Okay. Thank you for the warning. Yeah, oh, leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, just, just leave me alone. Okay. Bye. Every animal in the ecosystem has a role it plays. This is like a puzzle. Every piece has to fit in to act its role such that the ecosystem functions as a whole. Snakes have a very important role in the ecosystem. And that's it. They keep the population of rodents at bay. We know rodents are pests for our crops that we feed on. Rodents spread diseases, okay? They feed on bats, they feed on birds, okay? And others that feed on insects. So they have to keep the population of these other animals at bay, okay? In check, controlled. So if you take out all the snakes, we'll be having frogs everywhere, we'll be having rats everywhere, we'll be having insects, mosquitoes everywhere. Hey, moving your body in any shape and form is good for you. You don't need a gym or equipment. Just watch and follow me. Hey, can you recognize this sound? It's the snake. Can you dance like a snake? Start with your head like this. And now shoulder. Side to side. And now your hip. And your legs. Good. And now your hands. Here you go. Snake side to side. Can you move like a snake? Like a snake. Like a snake. Down and up. Now facing like a cobra. You're getting I there. Can try. You kneel down for not strong. This is where big sisters <gasps> well, it fine. feels cold, right? And then it feels, it feels cold. fine, it feels yeah. Feels cold. Yeah. yeah. Can I try? Brave. It feels cold. Good. It feels good, yes. Yeah. It's a bit cold, right? Yeah, and it's so smooth. It's so smooth. Uh, python sebe, the African rock python, uh, the biggest snake in Africa. Is this snake poisonous? Uh, pythons are not poisonous. Pythons are what we call constrictors, okay? What are constrictors? Uh, constrictors are reptiles that kill their prey by wrapping their bodies around them and squeezing them. Wow! And they eat a wide range of prey. Yeah. It can break its jaws apart to widen its gap and swallow an animal twice as big as it is. A 
cow? A cow? You mean a python can eat an entire cow? So different snakes have uh, different uh, pies, uh, patterns. Moving, it's moving, Sometimes they move. Just relax. So they get agitated when we hold them, okay, when we handle them. So we calm them down by just rubbing them, giving them gentle rubs. Why is he here and what happened to him? So people don't like them around their homes. So when they, they see them, when they find them, they call the reptile village to come and rescue most of these snakes. Unfortunately, when we get there, we find so many are being beaten, many have been cut, so we bring them here, treat them, rehabilitate them, and then eventually release them in a more safe place for them. There are so many myths that surround snakes out there. Snakes attack people, snakes are after killing people. But as you can see, our friend the python is just is not interested in any of us. He just wants to find his way and walk away from us, okay? So snakes are not after hurting you, my friends. Mm -hmm. When you see them, just stand still and it will just walk away. Mr. Wasso said we should leave the snake to walk away, but snakes don't walk. Do they? They slither and slide. You heard Mr. Waswa talk about the myths about snakes, right? Myth is just another name for a story which isn't really true. And we actually have a story from Zimbabwe about children and a python. <laughs> Once upon a time, a young boy named Babaka was playing at the foot of a large mountain. Help me! Help me! He heard, so he followed the sound until he discovered a small python struggling inside a hunter's net. Oh, help me, help me, please! Hmm, Babaka thought, people didn't help pythons and pythons didn't help people. But finally, he worked up his courage and set the python free. Oh, thank you. I promise to repay you. If you ever need me, just sing my song. Nyangara chena nyangara, nyangara chena nyangara. The years passed and Babaka was made chief of his village. He was wise and brave and everyone respected him, which is why they became very concerned oh. when... One day, oh. he fell terribly oh. ill. The only one who can save me now is Nyangara. Nyangara? The python? Yes. I rescued him once as a boy, and he swore to return the favor. Go! Lure him out of his cave at the top of the mountain by singing his song. Then bring him to me. Nyangara has grown very big and very strong, hasn't he? Nonsense! The men will go get him, won't we, men? Oh, yes, yes, of course we will! To the mountain! To, to the, the mountain. mountain! And so Nyangara the men climbed up the mountain, Nyangara singing Nyangara's song. Nyangara chena, Nyangara, Nyangara chena, Nyangara, Nyangara chena, Nyangara, Nyangara chena, Nyangara. Well, as usual, it's up to the women. After all, mothers can do what fathers cannot. And so the women climbed up the mountain singing Nyangara's song. I think we, the children, must go and bring Nyangara to you. Are you sure? Yes. You were so brave when you were our age. We know we can be the same. And so the children climbed up the mountain singing Nyangara song. Nyangara, Nyangara chena, Nyangara. 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 Yangara chena, yangara, yangara chena, yangara. 
Hello, my friend. I'm here to help you. <gasps> thank you. Thank you, Nyangara. And thank you, children. Yes, you are very brave. Now, can you bring the snake back up the mountain? Please. 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 And so, from then on, the children held a place of high honor in their village, just like their chief, Babaka. Ah, oh, can't we keep him? <laughs> no. Did the python really help the king? Well, not really, no. <laughs> Remember we talked about myths and how they aren't really true stories? Ah, right. Snakes can't really talk or heal people. Except in a me. Exactly. So, what shall we do next? Maybe we should find out what Alex and Lorraine are up to. Remember in the morning I told you I'm a hepatologist. A pathologist is a person who studies both reptiles and amphibians. What's an amphibian? An amphibian is a vertebrate that lives both in water and on land. Are they reptiles? Amphibians are actually known to reptiles. The two are completely different. The notable observable difference is the nature of their skin. Whereas reptiles have scales, as we saw in the morning, amphibians have a smooth, moist skin. So before we go, we need tools to help us get our study animals. So are you ready to go? Yeah, let's go! Let's go! Life started in water. Amphibians were the first vertebrates, okay? When amphibians evolved and developed lungs, they moved to land. The amphibians love water. Wherever there is water, you expect to see amphibians. I scoop in here and then see what we have. See, we have baby frogs. You see them? Baby frogs are called tadipoles, okay? Their babies exclusively depend on water. So that's why the amphibian has to stay close to the water. They breathe through gills. They don't have lungs. So when it develops through from the tadipole to an adult frog, it loses the gills and develops lungs. Me, I'm going to scoop down, down, down. I think I got something inside. Wow. Wow. What we have the rocket frog. Oh, so it jumps so high like a rocket? It jumps so fast and high into the grass. The muscles in its hind foot are very strong. And when it's making a leap, it rockets into the sky, okay? And that's where it gets its name, a rocket frog. Let me dip try it. And dip it in. Excellent. Wow. wow. What did I catch? Oh, you see it, it's climbing. Whoa, Good eyes. Wow. Whoa. What? It's a crown bullfrog. So we see what we have. We got ourselves a crowned bull frog. Wow. Look at how slimy this skin is. Okay? Purpose of being slimy is to keep its skin moist, to keep it wet. Look at the webbed feet to help it move. Look at it. Don't get scared, guys, okay? It's just a frog. The biggest frog is actually the size of a football. A ball, it's so big, it's called the Goliath frog, found in Cameroon, okay? Goliath and frog. Goliath frog. And you know the size of the tiniest frog? What? No? I don't see this small. It's called the mini toad. This, it, it can sit on my thumb and it's, we still have space on it, okay? <laughs> All right? And it's found in Madagascar. Frogs are used to tell to help us tell the status of the environment. When we release toxic fumes in the environment, the frogs absorb them through their skin because frogs are able to breathe through their skin. So if we have pollutions or pollutants being released in the water, the frogs will die, they'll reduce in number, so we'll know that our environment is being polluted. And then frogs are also very important in the ecosystem because snakes have to feed on them, birds, Crocodiles, monitor lizards, they can feed on what? On our frogs. So the frogs help to maintain the ecosystem integrity. 
they feed on mosquitoes, mosquitoes that cause malaria, okay? So That's if we take female. out frogs from the, from the ecosystem, we'll have a lot of mosquitoes. Can you jump like a frog? Here we go. And now the rocket frog. Jump. Up. High. To the moon. Stop. That was really, really, really good. Try to do that every day. Until next time we meet. Size doesn't really matter, hey? Mini toads or buzzing mosquitoes, everything in its place and a place for every little living thing. So many fantastic facts to remember. How many can you recall? Well, I know that snakes are part of the food chain, which means they eat the rats and mice that eat our maize. They also eat frogs, which eat insects that can make us sick. The insects are eaten by birds, and so it goes on a chain that includes us. Yes, we are all linked in that food chain. I am glad you remember that. Dinosaurs were early reptiles, so these creatures have been on Earth for far, far longer than we've been. I I'm still not sure about reptiles, but Alexis and Lorraine showed me I don't have to be afraid. Exactly. Just careful. Because even if I'm a bit nervous of them, they have a right to be here. That's very brave of you. And remember, let's ask, let's learn, and let's love. And don't forget to make it fun.